Box has always been the great struggle of life. You get hit. You get knocked down. You get the chance to get back up. You keep fighting and keep chopping away at this. That's life, and that's the same as boxing. The word reserve casts a long shadow in Canada. It suggests a place where hope can be in short supply, where the past still haunts the present. It's fact that reserves were developed and established for temporary purposes. And it's uh, an experiment of government that didn't work. It was gated in. There was curfews. We were told that the Indian agents will get us picking up little Indian kids and taking them away from their families. They weren't allowed to speak their language. There was the scandals, like the abuse, the sexual abuse. Member two is a Mi'kmaq First Nations Reserve in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. 1,400 people live here. By First Nations standards, Member 2 is not doing too badly. It has attracted businesses and created jobs, but troubles in the form of drugs, poverty, and youth suicide are never far away. It's a difficult situation to be in. It's really hard to have people come out of that. This place became an important refuge in Member 2. But it too was troubled. The band council was having disagreements with the coaches. And young people were staying away. So the council approached Greg Martin and his son Danny, who ran a boxing club 20 kilometers down the road in Glace Bay. My father, he's always up for an adventure. He's always up for something. So he said, we should really give it a try. But this challenge was different. Two non-native outsiders taking over a boxing club in a place scarred by painful memories. It's pretty hard to trust people when most all your land has been taken away, your resources, being told that it's for your own good. What were some of the stereotypes that you had before you arrived in Member 2? I've had minimal contact. Anybody who's Aboriginal, anybody who's Native, any of this culture, I knew nothing about it. I was probably under the same thought that most people are, that, you know, natives are, you know, getting everything, no tax. I was totally, uh, totally, totally wrong. How long did it take for you guys to build a trust with the kids after you got here? I don't think it took very long. Like I said, it, it was the, the native kids that did come in the gym, I think right away they recognized that we're, we're, we're here for the right reasons. They always called me Jenna the Beast. When I was younger, my mom was addicted to drugs. She had lost custody of us, so I moved here with my father. She doesn't like to brag, but what we saw was, we saw talent. Until I was 18, I had about 13 fights. I remember being just excited. I was just trying to have a lot of fun. So what happened when you were 18? I had a baby. It took time off to have a baby. It's a cow. Rates of teenage pregnancy are higher among First Nations than other Canadians. Do you know what that is? All too often, it leads to failure in school and dependence on welfare. What's that, Hunter? But Jenna had a goal, returning to the ring. What's that? I couldn't wait to come back. Like, in my head, it was like, okay, I'm going to have the baby, but that's not going to stop me from getting back to training and fighting again. What is that? A kid like that, she'll always find a way to, to come back and, and beat the odds. So it's just so it's great to see her. 
grew up in an alcoholic household. There was a lot of alcohol abuse, drug abuse. There was a lot of family violence. I was in and out of jail, man. I spent two Christmases in jail. I was drinking a lot. I was I was doing drugs. Honestly, if I didn't change, then then God knows where I would have been, right? So I was about 16, 17. I was walking by. I knew it was a boxing club, so I decided to peek in. Tried it out. I liked it. I kept coming back. It's been months. It's fair to say right now he's a different guy. Right now, everything's working great for Aaron. Since he's joined our program, I've seen that young fella absolutely do a 180-degree turn. This is a big night for the Member 2 Boxing Club. In front of a sold-out home crowd, they are testing themselves against other Nova Scotian fighters, as well as boxers from as far away as Ontario. This will be Jenna's first official fight since Hunter was born two years ago. When you get up there in the ring, how do you feel about representing Member 2, representing your community? It feels kind of like a lot of pressure, but I feel proud to represent the community. Like, I just want to give them a good show. Jenna loses the bout. But against an older, more experienced opponent, She's given the fans a good show. Now, the hometown hopes swing to Aaron. Everybody's encouraging us. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna give it all I got. When I was younger, I didn't really have the best name growing up around the community. Lately, people have been, oh, wow, you've been doing so good and, and way to go. What are your goals in coming years? I'm hopefully to get a degree in university, start a career. What are your goals with boxing? Like, if I'm still here in the community, I want to be a uh, you know, coach at this gym and stuff like that. Try to get as many young people in here as possible and, and really help them out. I don't want to see any, any young people go through the stuff that I went through. Aaron hasn't had an easy life and neither has Jenna. But because of the Member 2 Boxing Club, their lives have probably changed for the better. After I started boxing, that's when I started doing better in school. I wanted to be a better student, and I wanted to dream big. It was always my dream to be a doctor. I'm hoping that's where I'll be in, within the next five years. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> Since you had Hunter, what role in your life has boxing played? I want him to grow up seeing me and training as a fighter, and then eventually I want to coach and help other people learn and including my son he's not going to really have a choice 